Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. Do we need an excuse to look at Frank Frazetta artwork? <laughs> Jimmy, what do you have? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download out of print zines and mini comics like this collection of my ballpoint pen notebook drawings. I have about a dozen of those available, not drawings, but zines that you can download when you join. I also show a lot of original art. I show my process for making comics, including page by page analysis of what I do, how I do it, scripts, all that process stuff that we talk about here on Cartoonist Kayfabe, but focused on Street Angel Octobriana and my work on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Tom, what do you have? Here's Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics from 10 Speed Press, a subsidiary of Penguin Books. It's the story of Jack Kirby his life, his work, uh, you know, every, everything he, he did, all the things he uh, created and co-created that we enjoy to this day. Um, and I have a companion piece called Fantastic Four Grand Design, where it's um, basically the story of the Fantastic Four told in, in one oversized volume. Uh, you can also uh, check out the comics I'm working on currently uh, on patreon.com. Just search Tom Scholey. And... Uh, uh, check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. You have a good magenta in there, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I, I curated my my whole palette like one piece at a time over over the past ten years. Red Room Comics in the Wild: Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in in the Red Room universe. Every issue completely self-contained. So if you see an issue, scoop it up. You're going to get a complete story, unlike the other monthly comics that are out there. Uh, if you want to sample the comic. On Free Comic Book Day 2021, you're going to be able to get your hands on this. Probably one of my best comics that I've made to date for the sum total of zero dollars and zero cents. Uh, every story completely self... Uh, five stories in here. Uh, each one kind of fits in with a future... Uh, f with an existing issue of Red Room. Uh, if you want to read these comics before they hit paper, go to my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Episcor. Three bucks get you the archive there. And you get to read all of the comics before they hit paper. Like I said, fellas, who needs an excuse to look at uh, Frank Frazetta artwork? I have a two-volume set of these Bantam Books, Peacock Press uh, reproductions of Frazetta's uh, some ink work and lots of uh, paintings and book covers. Interesting to think about how influential he is for the body of his work mostly existing outside of comics, and yet I feel like cartoonists just draw from him uh, and, and different different details from him, you know, like he's influential in several different directions. There, there's a you could dissect that. There's probably a, a number of reasons. Like, I mean, he had, you know, he you know begins in comics and and had you know had his moment in comics, but then his subject matter is kind of so close to what comics covered, you know, for for much of his history. Yeah, he's that he's a post pulp guy who's sort of the archetype of that pulp ideal because mm -hmm. uh, I can remember being awed by this stuff long before I knew it was one artist or who he was yeah. or or was anywhere near thinking of a career in art but just seeing those you know paperback covers and being blown away We've done... and I love these nice the black and white reproductions that are crisp where you can see the fine line work like this phenomenal this was uh, you know reappropriated for um, it's from Famous Funnies but it was uh, reused for an EC Comics cover for uh, Amazing Science Fantasy, and that was the first slipcase that I found at a uh, flea market for like 10 bucks. When I laid my eyes on this cover, I couldn't believe that such pen and ink artwork was ever done yeah. for comics, ever. And then it's like stuff like, like that scarf. Man, you see like P. Craig Russell and like Bo Hampton and Bernie Wrightson. Like you can name a million guys who have done like fully uh, 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 drapery and stuff like pulling from like this square this is a good example for what his power is because one it's very detailed pen and ink work yeah. exceptional we can all admire that we've all tried inking <laughs> you know mm -hmm. we can understand that's impressive but it's so delicate and precise that often you would end up with stiff figures it's very easy to do you know very stiff compositions and this one is full of movement yeah. which is exceptional he's really good with weight and despite that detail nothing feels like frozen yes or, or modeled even though i'm sure you know a lot of his work is modeled it doesn't have that stiff quality <laughs> he's like bo jackson when he tells his story though man and he would say that i, I never look at a person i never look at photographs keeps up the kayfabe yeah for sure hey maybe Liv he lived for all it. i he know kayfabe, but uh, yeah. he certainly is able to capture both volume and motion in in black and white and color now we've done a video uh highlighting lots and lots of black and white uh imagery from uh frank frazetta man but let's jump into uh, the color gimmicks. I've never seen this book before today, 
the first thing I note is how damn well the color is reproduced in yes. these things. It's almost like encountering these works for the first time. Yeah. When I went to the museum, I, th I, I think I, I got these from uh, the museum. Uh, little, his wife, Ellie, I, I kept... Uh, Getting my nose too close to, to, the, <laughs> to the paintings and stuff, and setting off the the motion sensor or mm -hmm. like the uh, you know the security system. And but the fifth time of her like hitting the keypad, stopping it, she's like, "Oh, you must you really like his work, don't you? You're getting pretty close to." And and she and she gave me these sets of books and stuff. And one of the reasons why I was putting my nose so close to the paintings and stuff was because uh, I was very familiar with the work. And I get to see them in person, and they're actually a little different. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this motherfucker gets his paintings back and is still fussing with them. Yes. Mm. He's still playing with them, man. So, like, there's, like, very clear differences between, like, the printed version that you see up front and then what you would see uh, in real life. Yeah, that's, that's part of, like, the oil painting process. That, like, you know, like, a painting isn't finished, it's abandoned. Like you'll continue to... T and, and George Lucas cites that specifically when he talks about tinkering with his own body of work. We have a big gamut of stuff here. I mean, this is like creepy or eerie covers. Uh, you know, the Conan book covers and stuff we're going to see here. And these are the things that I would always see reproduced poorly. Yes. Or, or at least differently than what you see here. Like, to me, the color on this is a really great reproduction because it's so delicate. I've seen this image a million times. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it quite like this. You know, you fuzz out your eyes and, and just uh, just take... Imagine taking, like, a high contrast black and white Xerox of this. You get the Mignola vibe. Totally. Very much. It's about composition. It's about shape. Abandoning those shoulders. Uh, but then he has this other piece, man, where... This is the colored shadow that we would see uh, guys like McFarlane try to replicate to basically no success. I was going to say to ruinous <laughs> yeah. results. Yeah, but, but when you see this, it makes me understand what those guys are trying to do. You know, it's just pretty hard to do with a mechanical four color yeah, process. Yeah, this is like the Mignola like lines on the feet that You're you right. have in his sort of like... You're right. You know. Totally, man. I don't think I've ever seen this one. That's a fun color. Yeah, look at all the all the colors, all those how they're blues working off feel each like other. Something that I don't see in a lot of his work. And look, man, Marcellus Wallace's suitcase like fell into the <laughs> ocean. Are we happy, Vince? I love this image. I can't remember where I saw this. We were talking if it was a Warren cover or something, but I might have a Frazetta book that has it reproduced. But anyway, I love this image, and it looks the colors just really spectacular in this mm -hmm. edition. There's classic stuff to it too, like you know, like focal points mm -hmm. and all these directional devices. Man, he'll he'll do that thing quite often where there's like one color that points uh, to something that's completely divorced from all the other colors, and you see examples of that, like a Hellboy, where like if you see red, it's fucking Hellboy. That that's one of those things like. This one stood out when we were flipping through ahead of time and how this background is purple against the orange grate, but the value's light. You know, it's not a dark purple. It, it mm -hmm. really feels different than a pen and ink drawing or a comic book drawing, and I love it. Like, that is something to steal because you have the darks. There yeah. are things almost like middle ground, you know, middle ground into foreground, but I, I think that's really a nice uh, detail. There's that part that um, I often forget about when it comes to um, composition and in, in terms of picture making uh, when it's like focal points and uh, often I think of directional devices and uh, value but also uh, detail like if yeah. you if you accentuate something uh, a person's eye will linger on that a little bit more and it doesn't always come to mind because I always kind of like over render anyhow uh, but you got these like s curve composition to get us where we, where we need to go yeah with Frazetta stuff kind of like floats in and out of existence you know there's this like yeah just really like hazy areas mm -hmm. that then coalesce into like razor sharp Christmas. that is a great image like I, i'm looking at the the wolves in the distance are running and like one hand it's like man this is a half a second before they're on like a, like a split <laughs> second and then you look closer and she's clutching a baby yeah. like, take image. a yeah. take a real close look man and there's like greens and stuff making up that flesh tone because of the shadow and everything. Yeah, he's he's pretty daring with the greens. Like, yeah. like green is part of flesh. Whenever mm -hmm. I had painting yeah. classes and we would paint people, it was like we got our you know like this is the palette for making flesh, and green is one of those colors. Here's an example of like one strong piece of red 
yeah. amongst all that. But then there's like a little focal point there. You really like add the detail to that little skull That's face it. when everything else is that soft focus haze. Mm -hmm. That too, you know, adding some light. Yeah, his, it's nice to see these reproductions because you see how much color is in there. You know, and the reflections of the, of the floor, several colors in that floor. You know, like there's purples, reds, greens, yellows on that floor. Yeah. It's amazing. One of the uh, first artists, too, man, to really, you know, basically take a pay cut so that he could keep those originals, too, mm -hmm. man. Certainly a noteworthy There you go. Thing. Talk about color. Wow. Speaks to the 60s, man. Speaks mm -hmm. to psychedelia. This is the reason that I hate, like, the digital color of film today, where it's like, oh, it's all blue. Right. It's, it's so heartbreaking because it's no color. You know, same here. It looks like it's this monochromatic, almost sepia tone image until you start looking and see, like, that's a very saturated blue-green. Yeah, getting into Basil Gogo's territory, man, yeah. with, with the poppiness of that color. The depth of field is worth noting here, man, where, it, like, this is a very in-focus mm -hmm. character, famous for his horses. Yeah, these big high giant contrast, muscular. you know, compared to her, who also kind of in focus but much lower contrast i wish they had dimensions listed for this mm -hmm. stuff yeah. i would love to know how big some of these paintings are but then i'd probably just feel even worse about my own work <laughs> this, wow, this is incredible. one yeah i've seen a bunch of times just fire in the sky framed by bats and hands coming in and blades coming in there's no mistaking what you're supposed to be looking at yeah, here no doubt about that's it. that's what i talk about like the, the subject matter the, like this like if you're it's it's the 70s you're into comics you're into, like you're into this stuff whatever wherever it is whether it's on a book cover or on an album cover but i know. think i think he he nudged that like he's right. the guy who who, who made like people interested rod. yeah, yeah he, like defined this yeah exactly yeah he found this oh, this is just like a detail of this piece again look at the gorgeous color you know, it's so monochromatic in a way when you look at those figures, and it could be a comic illustration. You know, the darks on those figures could easily be blacks until you pull out and look at the overall piece. It's real funny thinking about what, what Conan was before yes. Frazetta did yes. his Conan. When you see like a Wally Wood Conan, like a pre-Frazetta uh, Wally Wood never, Conan. Never seen that, but but I mean, the, those early appearances where he just has like kind of like a little slick back hair and like, like, a, like a Hollywood... Uh, leading man kind of guy, like not yeah. very muscular, but, but like a Tarzan, I guess. Yeah, you yeah, know? sure. But, but he created like another another. 1967 variant. on the uh, signature there. Yeah, to, to the, give some perspective of when you know when this one is at least. Yeah, and this is the paperbacks. We're yeah. getting into the paperback covers with this. There's a worn cover for you. Now I don't know if this book has it, but if you've ever seen some of his like painting sketches, his painting roughs, they're like so beautiful, and they have like you know like kind of a loose quality to, and it is like. You know, finding that balance, like, at what point do you stop? At what point, you know, like, and I'd, I'd be pretty scared working on one of these and, and getting to, like, a really cool point and then pushing it further, you know, when he does it. One of the things that he described uh, between the difference between painting and the pen and ink stuff is that a lot of happy accidents when you're pushing ink, I mean, when you're pushing uh, right. oil paint around on a piece of masonite, uh, ink, pretty unforgiving stuff, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, I mean, oil, you can rework it yeah. almost Infinitely. infinitely yeah yeah you're you're really collaborating with the medium with when it's you one of the great oil. parts of yeah. painting is just the feeling like mm -hmm. the sensual feeling of the yeah. actual uh the oil the smell everything yeah it's so fun that, i mean that looks like that that uh mignola wolverine cover it totally yeah. does <laughs> it's so funny knowing uh you know the influence on mignola and then looking mm -hmm. through one of these books it's neat to see him do this kind of polish on the column Compared to several of the paintings we saw before this where you would see the soft. columns and they were very soft and very painterly and like this one, you can feel that texture. He can do it. He can do it, man. That that lighting feels real accurate. It's a famous one. I feel like they're all... <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's like a greatest <laughs> Maybe hit. it's because we're nerds and, on this stuff, you know, like we've seen them, even if they're not necessarily the iconic images, but man, they're all so... And stand out. He made sure to retain his copyright, create a brand almost with like his signature and everything. So then these pieces get sold and resold. Like he resells them. So they're a continual source of, of, of income. I'm impressed by how much he, he switches palettes from painting to painting also. Mm -hmm. Is there a date on that one? 72, a couple years later. But I mean, that's a totally different palette. And here I see Richard Corbin. Yes. Yeah. Good call. 
Yeah, when you have yellows mixed up with purples and stuff, like uh, you're playing with all the crayons in the crayon box. Yeah, you're right, Jim. Like, like in movies and stuff, it is it, like nobody approaches color like this. Really, color is the worst thing in, in contemporary movies, especially these big budget ones that are mm -hmm. all just digitally colored after the fact. It's horrendous. I always like felt like the arrangement of these bears was super smart. I feel like there's like lessons to learn mm -hmm. in here, but I don't know what it is. I need somebody to explain to me the choices for that man because there's like this flow that's happening mm -hmm. that feels really perfect and worked out this could be a video on reproduction because like i've seen this image of, you know like this is a, a famous image it's been used in different places and the reproductions i've seen vary so greatly yeah. from this yeah and, and size too so like you've probably seen like a paperback like that you know with it i've never seen that image me before. neither yeah and that looks atypical and no figures all right that's nuts. Look at that face. <laughs> What's real fun is like the That's earlier John stuff, stuff. Yeah, the earlier stuff um, was old pen and ink at the beginning. So yeah. we're bookended and this is his 70s. more developed. Fascinating that you don't see the figures, the human figure faces. Yeah. Yeah, human faces. Boring. <laughs> Look at that Mignola piece, man. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. You know that lack of human faces? I wonder if that's a book cover convention. You know, mm -hmm. books often try to shy away from defining those qualities. Mm -hmm. There's an uncanny valley thing too. Like I've noticed in, in murals and things that I that I see out in the wild. Like like if they put that face in shadow, like when they try to render an eyeball, it is something something is askew. That reminds me of a Mignola composition. You know, the details are different, but I feel like compositionally there's some overlap. Yeah, the way they overlap the the the, the darks and the lights and. And I mean, Mignola is like the guy who's coming to mind, but there, you know, yeah, there's endless names, you know, Wrights and, you know, just all these people who, who Arthur come Sidem, straight from, yeah. Sam Keith. I mean, yeah, know, Sam and Keith, it's yeah. funny because some of these guys, it's like the rendering, the line work is what you might be taking from it. You know, yeah. I see some real Sam Keith line work in that. Yeah, purely. Here the, we go. Look at the yeah. brush strokes. Go to this detail. Brush strokes on the horse. You know, like like these are just raw, very raw brush strokes. Yeah, man. Next I, to that polished arm, you know, the the saddle that's so detailed and polished and looks like metal, and it's next to what looks like just a giant brush stroke. Yeah, and he knows his craft, that's right? Awesome. So when we take a look and we step back, it's yeah, just a resolved. beautifully yeah. Rendel, yeah. rendered horse. Look at those strokes, right? Spectacular. And that's a is, mean spur, man, that he smacks that damn horse with. This is Death Dealer, who sort of has his own, like, cult of personality. Oh, yeah. He said he said uh, in a Wizard interview that um, the Death Dealer is his most uh, popular piece. Yeah, that totally makes sense when you think of his art and sort of the van art culture around <laughs> <Yeah>. that art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you mentioned Sam Keith. We're starting to see, like, yeah, where, where he gets some of his stuff. Yeah, even the foliage and things oh, there yeah. really... Mm -hmm. really seem like uh, we've we, we like, seen Wolverine crouch on this yeah, thing I right think there. So. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful lighting yellow on that blue background you know to hit the highlight on his chest and the orange on the arms you know complementary colors really making that pop there's a uh, there's a rights and swamp thing cover where there's like stacks of mm -hmm. people and it's kind of similar to this you, you talk about like like uh, Frazetta's like kayfabe like you have the subject matter of his paintings and then he did everything he could in interviews and stuff to kind of make it as if his real life is is a slight variation he has the of greatest this. author photos ever it'll be like him sitting there no shirt on a three-wheeler behind him and a yeah. girl in a bikini yeah. go, go see that painting with fire thing yeah you know we just wanted to play baseball and, and i hit this baseball we still haven't found it. The, it disappeared. The quote I think of with him was where he's like, he's like, I just think I'm a cat. I just imagine a cat and I become a cat and I can like climb up a wall. And <laughs> you know, he's like, hey, for super the gesture, human. Look at this figure as polished as like back muscles and defined as these figures are. And then like there he is doing very brushstroke like figures, almost mm -hmm. an impression of the figure coming out of the shadow and mass. And his sketches, his like painting sketches are more in that neighborhood and they're, and they're stunning. Yeah. Cl probably closer to what, like you know, uh, like 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 a like a gallery, like 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 hot, capital A art would be. That red for the second color on uh, is that a Conan? Pete, that has to be Conan, right? I think so. But man, this red coming off the cape, really yes. cool. Great double Beautiful. lighting. Yeah, McFarlane influence there. He, he's got Spawn's cape. <laughs> <laughs> that cape. Wow. Yeah. 
I it's love, impressive I, whenever it's like it's a back of a barely defined creature and it looks amazing those hands and claws phenomenal yeah and just like distorts that anatomy so like you know that 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 ain't some dude also the liquid that it's coming up out of just looks like a a mess of yeah. like gelatinous frothy you know that is not like coming out of a clean lake that, or that, something. that was what was interesting in that one the, the, the liquid is a character in this painting where, where <laughs> he was in bubbles where he was like stabbing the uh that spider or something in that red thing like just interesting story being told about mm -hmm. the, the the nature of this liquid that, that that it's in. Yeah, because everything around it is just a flat surface, so mm -hmm. clearly that's very deep, you know? But, like, you get in close, you see a lot of little Tolkien creatures uh -huh. and stuff. It looks like a dodo bird. Oh, yeah. Tolkien, yeah. When he connected with uh, Bakshi. He does great bears. That's that, That's, like... You know, pretty early in and his stairs. career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bears and stairs. Okay. Yeah, isn't, that a, isn't that a Cockney slang? <laughs> I think yeah. the bears. The bears and stairs. <laughs> it's incredible with the white background, almost like it's cut out. Yeah. And those faces, you know, has nothing to do with reality. It and really doesn't. And it's it's clearly Frazetta. Uh, but, like, as a kid, I would... This I would I would call this photorealistic sure, when yeah. I was like a little kid, you know, and it's like you know that's uh, that's a cartoon face. Yeah, I mean, but but the body is obviously like modeled, like obviously there's a model that that the, the lighting and everything and the coloration on that body is like too specific yeah. to just be out of that out of his head. It feels that way, but it's also there's a lot of uh, cartoony elements in that body. Oh sure, yeah, the 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 the. Um, anatomy of the body, but I'm just talking about the the way the yeah. color is on there. You you can't like just invent that. Yeah, I do call kayfabe on a lot of his mm -hmm. stuff with that. That's a pretty raw gestural piece. You yeah. know, that, that body is not yes. very uh, polished, painting-wise. Mm -hmm. It's cool when you see those. It looks like he's just chopping, adding that light, you know, with his brush real quick. Yeah, kind of makes me think of, like, Sin City. If, uh, you know, Miller were to draw, like, a naked back, you know... And and he's, you know, he comes from comics. He comes from the commercial... He is a commercial artist, so might not have even had time to... Uh, to get this thing done. You know, he's the guy, he's the leader of the Fleagles. Like, I'd rather play baseball or go see movies than uh, than do the work, man. So come help me. The variety of compositions is really impressive. Yeah. This one is like, you know, super iconic. Like, used yeah. again and again. I mean, that's, you could imagine Milius had, had a mm -hmm. giant print of that while he's batting out the script or whatever. I feel like this is an image that I've seen where this background, the soft details, just wash you out. You don't even see there. it. Yeah. You absolutely do not even see it. And for the paperback, it's probably cropped out. Yeah, you I know, think it I, is. The sides, the edges there. Yeah, man. The hints of bone in the in the pyramid below them is really great. That you think, like, man, like, you know, you see the Skull Castle and stuff, and then you realize, like, how the, the influence he had, like, on like, Masters of the Universe. Sure, yeah. That. Look at this for great detail. Is There's a skull, and it's just fractured. It looks like somebody hit it with a rock. Yeah, man. That's like an orc skull, too. And look at that sad cuss. <laughs> <laughs> Hamburger. Um, yeah, well, this piece is actually on canvas. Like, a lot of his stuff would be on, like, just like a slab of rock, like a slab of masonite, man. It's so detailed. All the little highlights on metal, like on the knife and the sword and his bracelets and stuff. Hyper-focused. Yeah, and look at those keloids, man. The keloids are different than the uh, than the veins. And then just like look at these like chunks that were yeah, taken out scar. with like a battle axe. That's badass. Yeah, man. Very believable. That's that shit that, you know, Bisley would see and be like... I was always impressed when I'd see paintings of water done well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, right? Because it seems like impossible, and I don't even know how you could, like, study it. Yeah. Like, like you know, set up your easel yeah, in front of the water. It. Yeah. it still doesn't make sense to me how that would work. Yeah, I was just at the museum uh, taking a look at a bunch of stuff, and there were, you know, these paintings from 1800 with, like, just, like, crashing waves. And it's like, well, how did he do that? Uh -huh. like, yeah. like, I mean, you just have to commit that to memory somehow, photographic memory. Listen, man, took a look at volume one. Uh... Future video, you know, we got volume two. We'll have to look at more of these things. Always a nice reminder, man, to uh, revisit Uncle Frank and his contributions to uh, pop culture, comics. And, and also to go to the Frazetta Museum, I guess, for these books. Uh, yeah. These are great reproductions. I'm so impressed by that. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there?
patreon.com slash jimrug. Download out of print zines and mini comics. Have about a dozen of them there. Check out my original art, my scripts, how I make the comics I make at patreon.com slash jimrug. Uh, check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics in the Wild, three issues on the stands as we speak. Every issue completely self-contained, so if you see an issue, give it a sample. Give it a read. It'll give you a complete story. Hit up the uh, Free Comic Book Day event. Scoop up that uh, Free Comic Book Day Red Room comic. Hit up my Patreon patreon.com slash edpiscor you can read the comics before they hit paper and all of these links are in my link tree in the description below this video subscribe to the cartoonist kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video you can also find cartoonist kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video something about looking at this stuff makes me want to bust out my little paints man mm -hmm. jimmy give them the marching orders let's be on our way make more comics